Ah, oh, he's just attacking that knight. That's that's really embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> um. Oh, horrible. Let's play for d3 anyway. Or knight d4. Okay, let's start playing. Just, I don't know, try and use some compensation. Knight d4. Try and get a pawn back. It's not going to be possible, is it? Try and play for d3. Try and get some life into the position. He shut down this bishop early on. There's no life in this position. So he's two pawns up. But I have got that d4 square. Okay, I've got the d4 square for a moment. And I've got potential for d3. If I can just win one pawn back, uh, but that's very unlikely. But I've got d3 maybe on the cards. He's got knight d6 after. There's bishop c4 here. I'm actually attacking the rook at the moment. So he moves, he does rook d3, knight d4. I'll be attacking bishop and knight. Take, take. Maybe, maybe I can win one pawn back. I don't know. He's using a bit of time here. Maybe, maybe there is a problem here. Um, so, okay. So what's going on here? The rook moves, say to d3, knight d4, attacking knight and bishop. Knight takes, knight takes, attacking bishop. Bishop moved in the ordinary scenario. Okay, do this anyway. Oh, why not knight c7? Oh. All right, so I accept to take that. <laughs> so he's let me a tape back. <laughs> oh, I just, I just, I was, I was thinking too much about ninety four. Was it a good move? He's tricking me. Was it a good move? Hey. <laughs> Might be four instead, please. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh. <laughs> Bishop C4, yeah, well, I don't want to strand in knight. <laughs> I don't want a knight on A8. I want one pawn back, as I was saying, as I say earlier. I just want one pawn back. <laughs> Hi, all. I thought it would be interesting to revisit this position with a very, very powerful engine, Houdini 4, in the cold light of day. And black here, Houdini is indicating, is already much better. Technically, black is two pawns up. We have four pawns here, three pawns here, seven pawns in total. I'm two pawns down, and it's approaching actually plus three to black. Whatever um, happens here at the moment, it's plus three for black. And that guy took some time and played the move rook a5 which is the engine's fourth best choice still with an advantage of about one and a half units uh, so rook a5 apparently 
in this position uh, rook a4 might be a bit uh, technically stronger so there will still be the possibility of knight c7 but apparently it's, it's just technically stronger let's look at this knight c7 in what was played so rook a5 uh, so knight c7 Naka offered the opportunity for me to take back after I played knight bd4 I thought with knight bd4 that you know if he takes I'm atta attacking this I'm going to get one pawn back with a strong knight on d4 and with d3 to follow I thought I'd open up this bishop so there, there was a positional basis for trying to improve the quality of the pieces but it seems a lot of people that that came to the channel I think especially for this game seem to just value a uh, material gain move uh, even though I, hadn't, I don't think I'd um, I, I, I realized shortly after I'd, I'd missed that and then there was the take back request from Nakamura as well so but if we look at knight c7 here it's already in a bad position and trying to win material from an already bad position often doesn't really help I mean it's prone to backfiring and here though black does have a very strong move available in bishop c4 counter-attacking the knight here so at minimum it's going to be just an exchange sacrifice for two pawns in effect and often uh, when you look at even you know master games that's often deliberate to sacrifice the exchange for one or two pawns because then you know the evaluations are slowly often increasing uh, for the person with with the exchange down the two pawns because sometimes it's possible to grow an advantage uh, depending on on other features of the position here uh, we notice though that the knight is kind of stranded uh, if knight takes a8 let's examine knight takes a8 which the engine is actually not even indicating as the strongest move here it's actually indicating knight d4 as the strongest move I think there's an emphasis on getting this b pawn back uh, potentially so knight takes d4 knight takes a8 this is still very very bad uh, for white knight c2 and black uh, is dominating the position with this, this outside pass pawn this knight can come here this rook can come here the bishop's going to come here and then b3 this just looks horrendous uh, this position and that's with the technically stronger knight d4 but let's go with knight takes a8 which is what most people were crying out in the comments of the game at the time so basically this position is still very very bad for white all white has done is simply win an exchange but it's for two pawns and you'll know of course you know the considerations I made are also apparent here that the bishop is actually locked out of the game with this pawn chain uh, that e4 has really locked out this bishop and the rooks attacked so say we move this rook here just attacking the bishop bishop d3 and the bishop is conveniently on the docking square of the pawn queening and so where can the rook go if it goes to b3 bishop c2 and we can drive the rook back and then b2 this rook's in prison this bishop's kind of in prison there is actually no d3 to liberate the bishop at all and black can now just improve his position at leisure with knight b4 and knight d3 to have kind of an octopus knight a knight with tentacles in all directions here uh, you know for example if I get my knight out knight b4 will do to demonstrate this I mean just knight d3 it doesn't even matter if this this is just an enormous position for black uh, so yes the exchange up but just a totally lost position knight d6 to c4 is going to happen and white is just overloaded the rooks you know if they don't have open lines uh, being an exchange out is close to useless the rooks just have no life to them uh, black controls the a file with his rook there's no entry points at all and this knight maneuver promises black a, a clear and easy route for increasing his already uh, winning advantage so essentially uh, it's an entirely lost position uh, to begin with uh, whether there's a take back or not here uh, for knight c7 or not and I, I, I tried to explain this in the comments but it's easier to do a video about it to graphically illustrate that this position is entirely lost after knight c7 bishop c4 it's completely and utterly lost in my view if now let's examine for a moment what what Houdini thinks is technically stronger in knight d4 so knight takes d4 here knight takes a8 okay so we've we've saved the knight we've drawn that knight away we've we've taken away protection from that pawn for a moment but still knight c2 
and the best here is apparently at a certain depth anyway, bishop f1. So even the exchange up here, uh, after knight d6 again, we have this very, very dangerous b pawn. Let's say I, I get the knight uh, back to the center a little bit, knight c4. This pass pawn and these knights are just horrendous. I actually have to defend d2 here. So say uh, rook, let's, let's say this one, then rook a2. And what is actually white up to? Black is now going to play, be playing things like a5. And these pawns are just growing black's advantage, really. It's a classic case of being the exchange down, but being able to grow the advantages. And if rook f2 again, uh, just rook a3. Um, and it's it's just it's just completely hopeless. Something like knight b5, rook d3. There's pressure on d2. And if if I'm going to get tied down to d2, the pieces are all dead here. And black can just start using two connected passed pawns here, which is what they are. They're two connected passed pawns with no resistance here. So this position is in effect it's totally dead. Any rook c1, there's b3. So really, there was no there was no major missed opportunity. I know there was a lot of confusion as to what happened. It's not me that asked for a take back. I just want to put that down in the record again. It was Nakamura who spent a long time here, um, maybe with some uncertainty. I don't know about knight c7, um, and then surprised I played knight bd4. But actually, you know, knight bd4 is considered actually technically. Uh, a depth 21 here, the second strongest move in the position. The actual strongest move is knight ed4, uh, where I'm only minus, apparently minus 1.4, one down. Uh, so if, for example, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, we have a useful double attack uh, to not be the exchange up, but just trying to get one pawn back, which is what I kind of mentioned. And I thought this position has a prospect of d3. So I think actually this this game fragment really shows uh, that at different levels, uh, people seem to value material and not how damaged uh, the pieces are, or how much potential the pieces are to become enlivened or increase quality gradually. And the role of you know past pawns coming down the board. This position actually has, um, for me, a lot more prospects than any of those exchange down scenarios. And this is the sort of thing. You know that I just in, I just wanted yeah to improve this bishop and to get one pawn back, but um, here you know it's just it's just an incredibly difficult position. The the rook is actually protecting the bishop, so there's no there's no d3 that can just be taken. Uh, this this is no good uh, to allow this position really, uh, because black still has the two connected passed pawns and a horrible pin now on the d file, so. In, in what I played, which was technically inferior though, knight um, bd4, uh, the game, okay, let's see what happened in the game. As a recap, knight takes d4, knight takes. Uh, this knight takes d4 might have not have been the strongest here. Knight fd8 is apparently a bit stronger. So this already is just minus one. So already this is much better than anything to do with knight c7. So bishop d5 gaining one pawn back, uh, rook c8, and now I play d3, which is not very effective because the rook is, is protecting the bishop. Instead, here, uh, the engine suggests king g1, and black can start working with his pawns though, but bishop f1, the thing is, it's not it's not entirely dead as before, but it's still it's still pretty grim. We're talking about minus one technically, and at least also a five. There's you know the b six would be loose at the moment, uh, but black could progress with something like this apparently, and um, it's going to be very very difficult. It's ultimately it's a it's a lost position. Uh, so, but yeah, I made things worse again with d three. Uh, so this was just taken, take here, took here, rook takes d three. Now knight d6. So this pawn is is kind of going nowhere at the moment. It's locked down, and black has these two passed pawns. And in fact, after rook a3, um, he played actually a5, which is very nice tactically. Uh, so b6 isn't actually loose in this configuration. I played that and fell for this knight fork, and I resigned here. 
Uh, if instead, well, I'm in a terrible state here. If rook b1, say knight c4, black's making headway here now. Uh, so say rook c3, rook d c5. Now knight d2 is on the cards. It's a nice blockade of this pawn, and we've just got these two connected past pawns. So basically, yeah, it it wasn't really a major missed opportunity at all. It it was already a lost position. Um, and I, I think uh, if, if we just quickly look at the opening, I was, I've, it was an entertaining opening though, and it's the sort of thing Nakamura plays. So it was like a uh, kind of respect of, of his style of playing uh, five minute chess or three minute chess. When he won the ICC Open, he was often playing beefy, but uh, it's it's uh, not just you know the moves to start off with, it's always the follow ups, uh, which is the big skill. So he's opened up that semi open D file, and it led to these problems where I was, I was kind of bound down on the deep one and this bishop was locked in in any case so we reached that position where um, I kind of lost some pawns here on the queen side I was under great pressure here I had to have played knight c1 that's apparently best safeguard my queen side pawns and play a bit passively and I'm just minus like half a pawn here but the way I played it losing that that critical uh, there's also bishop b3 here was, was pretty good as well. But taking on a3 is pretty good. So losing these two pawns, that really ended the game. I mean, it's, it's it, you know, even against um, someone not so strong as Nakamura, this is just lost. Uh, but uh, yeah, knight c7. I hope that's covered the events of that day and the take back requests and cleared up some, some ideas about winning the exchange. You know, if you're already in a, if you're not in a great position winning the exchange, is essentially no big deal. Um, but I hope you, you got something out of this analysis. Comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.